Hello everyone. In this INR number 77, I am going to tell you one of the recently asked topic that is Wilms tumor. So again, very important topic in pediatrics also. So Wilms tumor, what is Wilms tumor? Remember, this is a pediatric renal tumor, also known as nephroblastoma. See, nephro means kidney. So this is the kidney, a mature cell. That is why blastoma. So nephroblastoma. This is the most common renal malignancy of the early childhood. Remember, so what is the age group is two to four years. That is important PYQ. Remember, commonly it will be affecting two to four years of the age group and they will be having association with loss of function gene mutation. Remember, this is very important. What kind of mutation? Loss of function gene mutation of WT1 gene or WT2 gene. So there are two genes WT1, WT2. These are the two genes which will be having losses and both are present on the same chromosome that is chromosome number 11, right? So Wilms tumor, this is having association with loss of function mutation of gene WT1, WT2 and it is prom prom present on chromosome number 11, right? Most commonly if you see the Wilms tumor, you can see in this picture also you can see there are two kidney and only one kidney is affected. So most commonly they are sporadic and when they are sporadic just like an adult renal cell carcinoma when they are sporadic they are unilateral that is what we have to remember so we are seeing only one kidney affected so that means we are seeing a sporadic unilateral type of you know a uh, wilms tumor only 5 to 10 percent are hereditary and bilateral remember this is a one of the sentence in the pre pyqs so only 5 to 10 percent will be hereditary and bilateral so majority are sporadic and unilateral which is 90 percent what will be the clinical finding that is again important thing why i'm saying because when you will compare with adult renal cell carcinoma adult renal cell carcinoma most common presentation is hematuria but in case of wilms tumor hematuria is the least common cause least common presentation so what is most common presentation most common presentation is palpable abdominal mass so mostly that parents or mother will be telling that while i was doing oil massage i felt there was a mass right so there was a mass like that they will be telling you so that is the most common presentation palpable abdominal mass they will also have hypertension and fever so fever and hypertension can be also along with them but remember hematuria will be least common which is most common presentation in the adult renal cell carcinoma but in pediatric renal cell carcinoma which is wilms tumor you will find abdominal mass as a most common presentation so these wilms tumor they are associated with three named syndrome remember three named syndrome wagger syndrome danish drash syndrome and beckwith widman syndrome so these are the three syndromes and this is a pyq that which syndrome is having maximum risk wagger danish drash or beckwith widman who is having maximum risk for wilms tumor so please remember danish drash will be having maximum risk of wilms tumor which is approximately 74 percent rest of the thing will be shared by these two so if, if examiner ask you who is having maximum risk of the wilms tumor so answer will be danish drash syndrome is having maximum so what is wagger syndrome wagger syndrome means wilms tumor a for aniridia you can see there normally we have iris but in this baby you don't have any iris so that is why aniridia means absence of the iris then genito urinary abnormalities will be there and mental retardation r is retardation in the development right so it is intellectual disability will be there danish trash syndrome what are the things you will observe one thing is wilms tumor second you will see in the kidney diffuse mesangial sclerosis as you can see here diffuse mesangial sclerosis and then dysgenesis of the gonad or male pseudo hermaphroditism also can be watched in this beckwith widman syndrome what they will have one thing is wilms tumor and macroglossia bigger tongue they will be having organomegaly and hemihypertrophy of the organ so hemihyperplasia and kids may have omphalocele also right so these are the three syndromes we have to remember wagger syndrome danish drash and beckwith widman who is having maximum risk of wilms tumor that is danish drash syndrome right how we will go give the diagnosis of the wilms tumor so you we can use the ct scan we can take the help of mri also but confirmation is done by excisional biopsy and their histopathology right and on histopathology what we will see see the histopathology of wilms tumor is considered as triphasic histology they have three things what are the three things blastemal component epithelial component 
and stromal component right so these are three component blastemal epithelial stromal what is blastemal component they will have a small round blue cell so now you can see this area right and you are seeing so many small round blue cells they are very closely packed and a closely packed small round blue cell tumor so these are blastemal component right what is epithelial component epithelial component will be showing you tubules and rosettes so now you can see this is the tubule this is the tubule or rosette so these are the tubular component right so these are the tubular component or epithelial component and a stromal component will be having a spindle cell so this is the mesenchymal you can see these are all small small spindle cells are there so this is the mesenchymal or a stromal component so that is why it is called as triphasic histology blastemal epithelial stromal all three components are present we will say that it's a Wilms tumor so this will confirm the diagnosis so once the diagnosis has been confirmed treatment will start what is the treatment we can do the trans abdominal nephrectomy remember we can do surgical treatment we can give chemotherapy we can give radiotherapy all three things can be given so trans abdominal nephrectomy will be done which will be followed by chemotherapy in chemotherapy we can give vincristine and dactinomycin right and they are highly radio sensitive remember that is why i said we can give all of them surgical treatment then chemotherapy then uh, you know radiotherapy because they are highly radio sensitive tumor and post op radiotherapy can be given them within 10 days after the surgery right so we have to plan for radiotherapy within 10 days after the surgery right and what will be prognosis overall because these are non endocrine tumor so overall good prognosis only but when you find the language that loss of heterozygosity of chromosome 1 short term and chromosome 16 long arm that will be having poorer prognosis so they will be having poorer prognosis so remember that chromosome 1 p 16 q loss will be correlating with poor prognosis and what will be the most common site of metastasis that was the question in exam recently and that is the lungs just like uh, adult renal cell carcinoma most common site of metastasis lung same way Wilms tumor most common site of metastasis will be again lung so keep revising this topic for your exam and you are going to get question in your NEET PG and FMG exam from these topics. So my best wishes to all of you.